All right, welcome into Amon Green's Gamers Now. I'm your host, Amon Green. Um, and if you're first time tuning in here, we're living in both worlds here on, I uh, say, the internet. Um, we're in the podcast world, so basically radio type world where you, wherever you download your podcast, iHeart, Spotify, Pandora, um, Apple Podcasts, we, we, that's where you could download us. You could give us feedback. And so we're also on Twitch Live right now on my Twitch channel, Mon Green TV. So welcome in. Um, this is a video game. I say S podcast. We talk about video game topics from esports to news from the video game world. And then we bring in special guests like we have today. So I'm excited about our guests. I'm excited about uh, the conversation we're about to have with him. Um, but as we usually do, if you're first time in, we come in, we check into uh, what we did. What I've done, I say, I keep saying we because a uh, good friend, John, Audius, who is not with us today, he had to you know, take care of some family stuff. And I hope everything goes good for him and his family. So he'll be back next week. Um, we have a great show also set up with uh, Kurt Van Kurt, the backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, who, uh, who is also a Twitch streamer as myself. And uh, so, John, hope everything goes well, man. See you next week. And so checking in from last week, I've been, you know, super busy as usual. It's been um, I went back. I went out to uh, Las Vegas to visit or uh, not visit, hang out with a good friend of mine and his former teammate, uh, Marco Rivera. So I had a time to spend with him and his family. He turned a big 50 years old. So it's just crazy to see him and his family, his, his wife, his kids, at, who I haven't seen obviously in a while because of COVID. And now getting back into the flow of things where people can, you know, access certain areas, can go together and hang out without masks and all that's without mask on. And so that's been going on. So that was a great weekend. Um, that was a great time, great weather. You know, living in Wisconsin, everybody knows it's like, oh man, we're like right there. We're at the turning point of good weather time. So it's, it's one day it teases you with 80 degrees and the next day it's like 35 and, and almost a flurry of snow. It's like, what's going on? It's a confused. No, it's this upper Midwest, as I say to people, it's just the Midwest between April and May or March, April and May, where uh, we get the transitional weather of certain things um, on there. So, um, uh, so I'm going to bring on our guy. So my guy, we met just a few weeks ago. And I was in the booth doing autographs, and right next to me, I started noticing certain art, certain artwork that I remember from a kid. You know, from the late '80s, early '90s, I was an arcade kid. If I wasn't playing my Nintendo or Sega Genesis at home, and I'm looking at this artwork, and I'm like, "Hold up, that's Rampage. That's the is this the artist from Rampage?" And I'm like, I asked the question. I asked, I talked to him, and he's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Huh." Oh, oh. So, I mean, I, already, I pretty much let the cat out of bed because it was so fun to find the seat to sit next to him and to find out what he's up to. So, I'm gonna bring in the artist and creator, uh, Brian F. Collin. Hey, Brian, from uh, that creates Rampage of the, from the arcade level all the way into the 2000s, bringing in the movies. So, Brian, man, welcome into the podcast, man. How you doing? A lot. Uh, great, great. Uh, like you said, uh, Midwest. I'm not quite as upper Midwest as you, but down here south of Chicago, uh, it's been crazy and no volcanoes this morning, but at least the sun is shining. Life looks good. Uh, so it's a great day. Starting out is a great day. Right, right. Well, you, so what's the you, you said it in the text message, too. You said no volcanoes. What, what's that reference to? I got to know. <laughs> sure. oh, because we get everything. And like, you know, you're upper Midwest. Oh, you know, yeah. One day it's 80. Next day it's hailing. Next day it's raining. Then it's misting. Then it's cloudy. Yeah, we don't get really too many, you know, tornadoes. We don't get too many volcanoes, but that's about the only thing we don't get, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, now it makes sense. Yeah, because I've been, you know, I've been in Wisconsin. I've been in the Midwest for the majority of my life. And I would say last year or two years ago, I was watching the news. And it was around this time of the year. It was probably a little earlier. It was more like April. And I remember the weathercaster says, oh, we're going to have a thunder blizzard tonight um, in the Green Bay area. I'm like, just say a blizzard. Yeah, right. Why you gotta add all these flashy, sexy? I guess they're flashy, sexy words to it. Just to just to say blizzard. Just say we're getting two to three inches or a foot of snow. But you gotta put thunder blizzard. Well, and again, but it, I mean, normally you don't. But you know, you normally you don't get thunder and lightning during a blizzard. True. 
Right. Oh, so, I mean, I think I heard, I've heard that in recent years too, just as the weather gets, you know, halfway through the night, it's a thunderstorm and then it turns into a blizzard or, right. uh, oh, this is fun. Cause I really, I didn't realize we were going to be talking weather for the next hour. So well, we, that's great. I, I can, I can describe snowflakes. I've actually found two that were the same ones. One melt, one melted. So, so I, got it, got it. The one. yeah. Well, you're going to learn real quick as you learn right now, we shoot from the hip here, even though we have scheduled questions, there's going to be other conversation pieces that cool. come up. All right. Uh -huh. So the so first question I ask all my guests coming in, because you're in, I mean, you've been in the gaming industry probably as long as I've been on this planet. Um, and, and I'm happy to have you here. So your gaming origin is going to be definitely interesting. So what is your gaming origin? So I know you created games and the artwork for games. So did you ever get it? Obviously get a chance to play this. I know you played Ramp Chase, but any other game that got you inspired to play video games and also also be the artist. Who was it who got you into gaming and how old were you and what was that game? Okay. Um, so I'm old. Okay. For starters, I, right. I've been working in the game industry literally for 40 years now. Um, I'm 45. Before, so almost my whole life. Almost right. my whole life. Um, and Honestly, um, you know, when I was growing up, my extent of gaming was the Magnavox Odyssey, which yeah. had Pong. Yep. And if you wanted to see it in color, you put up a, a tinted colored thing that you stuck on the TV so it would look like tennis. Um, I was not much of a gamer. I yeah. like pinball. But, you know, I was a filmmaker, actually, you know. Okay. And uh, what got me, I do remember what, the only video game I liked, I think, before I got the job, my job got me into gaming. Correct. And we'll, I'm guessing you're going to ask about that, but we'll find out oh, more about that. I think yeah. the only game I ever really liked, arcade, you know, saw it in the arcade was Battlezone. Mm. The vector game and it just went forever, really. And I'd sit there and put my little face up against the slot. And that's the only game I really got into on my own. Once I got in the industry, though, right. everything changed. So it was basically that time now to game was more time to actually make the game is what you're referring to. Right. Once I got, once I got into, once I got the job, right. uh, once I got the job, then as much as I didn't want the job. Oh, interesting. I was so a filmmaker. Was I was a filmmaker. I made, I, and I, I made an animated film. I never thought of myself as an artist, more of a cartoonist. And I okay. did that for a living, you know, out of college for pizza and beer, doing ads and newspaper ads. But I did an animated film that won of a lot of awards okay. uh, called In Search of a Plot. And the, um, I answered it. I saw an ad for the Bally Midway company and it's like, great. I love pinball. And with right. my cartoon style, and they needed an animator. And I'm thinking, what does a pinball company need an animator for? And I, I'm 20 something. And I'm like, I got it. I right. paid on clear cells to do animation. They need someone to paint back classes as if a corporation would actually hand paint a back class. Right. But I'm a kid. I don't know any better. And right. I go in and they're like, no, we want someone to do animation for video games. Mm. And I'm like, what? Okay. Pac-Man. Really? You pay people to do that? Oh, I didn't say that. I'm like, well, thank you. I'll consider it carefully. And I left there and it's like, okay, that's not an option. And I even told him, it's like, you know, I have a, success, I have a successful ad agency. I make like right. $300 a month, you know, and they're just right. rolling their eyes going, yeah, we can do a little better than that. And the, I get the call and they say, no, we offer you a job, pay you real money, no more beer and popcorn type thing. Right. And I hung up the phone and I, I kind of turned to a friend. I kind of choked up. It's like, well, that's it. Childhood's over, man. I got a real job. And I did. I choked up. And, man, I was wrong in every sense. Childhood has never been over. And it's never been anything like a real job, man. It's got been it. wonderful. Oh, that was, that's great to hear. Because when you get in um, the business and you find out, like some of the, like you just found out, you found out, okay, this is real world. It takes, you know, it's a different feel, you know, talking in an office, sitting in a meeting, you know, you're not, you're on, you're on somebody else's time. You're not on your time. So right. I can hundred percent understand that because I remember when I got into, when I got drafted to the NFL, you know, mentally I knew 
okay, this is this is it. You know, this is the time where obviously I make a name for myself, but also this is for myself and my family right. to me earn money, not right. only play a kid's game. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> and you and it, then it, it, it like for a long time, even in college, it was hard for me to go from saying <clears throat> I'm going to play football with my teammates where I got to go to work. It took right. me probably five, six years in the league to say, oh, I'm going to work instead of saying I'm going to I'm going to practice. I was always an in the moment guy in college, too. I was in right. I was going to school for film, but I had no idea how to get a job. And I never right. actually really looked into it much. And. I didn't want the job, but as an animator, you know, two weeks after being there, I was hooked. I was right. working on Discs of Tron was the first game. And I don't know if you remember that far back in the arcade world, but it was like a 3D and they're, they're, you're shooting the Frisbees back and forth at each other. And it was yes, an I amazing that. breakthrough. And as an animator, I'm drawing for weeks. I'm filming for nights. I'm sending the stuff off and then I'm getting the film back. And, you know, long process to find out you made a mistake on frame 4092 and you got to start all over. Uh, I work at Midway. I get the job as an animator and a lot of limitations, but I'm working in the morning and I'm seeing it in the game in the afternoon. My images are animating in the programmer's office across the hall. I was hooked. It was, it was, I stumbled into this industry, right. total luck. And the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Oh man! So yeah, that yeah. Once you see, I can imagine that. I mean, I, I say I'm not a great artist. I'll be honest. I, I remember I drew a banana, and it was more comic relief for the family um, when I took an online art class <laughs> years ago. Um, but that's one thing I wish I had a, as a talent because when I see your artwork, um, it just brought back all these memories. You know, it brought back the memories of me going to the arcade in our neighborhood in Los Angeles, um, and me. Five six dollars of quarters going in, trying to go to every city in uh, in Rampage, you know, and try to beat that game. It was just so because I was a movie person, so I knew. Okay, I'm like obviously wasn't King Kong, but you just know. Okay, that's right, supposed to be right. represent King Kong, and maybe Godzilla. You're not sure about the lizard. Um, and it was yeah. actually uh, a lot of people think Godzilla, but I was a Ray Harryhausen stop motion because I'm an animator. Right, a Ray Harryhausen thinking uh, you know King Kong was the original was stop motion. Ray Harryhausen did a film called uh, 20 Million Miles to Earth, and the giant lizard in that was called the Ymir. And it was smaller than, it was more God, King Kong size than Godzilla. So that's mm -hmm. who Lizzie was based off of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so going into. Big secret revealed there. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so let's talk about. So when did you know your love for being an artist? When did that come about? Because. That's where you were first, and then you, like you say, you went into the movie part of it as well. Or to the, as, a kid, as a kid, I grew all the time uh, okay. for my own amusement. Um, art classes, uh, I was <sighs> the art teachers were like, you know, okay, memorize these artists and do this stuff, yeah. and you know, and what is the definition of art? I remember one big blow up in in maybe junior high school or high school teacher. You know, well, what is art? And I said, well, art is anything I say it is. Mm. Big, blew up a big thing. And, you know, the classroom is, uh, you know, erupted. You know, it went on for a bit because I said, no, it's subjective. You can tell me that's art and maybe we agree, but right. art is personal. And I do what I do for fun because it makes me smile. And if you were to look at it and say that's not art, it's like, fine, that's your opinion. So I, I was never thought of myself as an artist, I, but I drew cartoons for fun. And then in college, that was my beer money every week is doing ads for papers and stuff like that. So it, I got really into the habit without ever really thinking of myself as an artist. I still was making lots of films all through high school, but then mm -hmm. at Valley, I was given a ton of limitations, 16 colors, big fat squares that I had to you know, oh. image an inch tall had to make look <clears throat> like something. And instead of having 32 frames to make a run cycle, I had four frames and I had to oh. make it look good. So um, the challenges were as much fun as game design. The challenges were mm -hmm. as much fun as drawing. So it was falling into the industry became the whole package for me. Tell me I can't do something and I'm going to figure out a way how to do it. 
You know, that was part of the fun. Uh, see, I like that last line right there. Tell me I can't do something. That was like, that was definitely my motivation coming into my rookie year in Seattle. That's where I got drafted. And I was supposed to be a late first round pick, but I slipped, as they say, I slipped to the third round. And what I said to myself um, when, when I got drafted was basically, OK, for all 31 teams that passed me over for two rounds, y'all in trouble. There you go. Y'all figured out. Y'all just y'all about to find out what happens when you when you don't pick me, basically. And that's what I did for every top or every opportunity I got to play against a team that passed me over. They they got my best. You, you know, just, so you just it up a notch. You went up to 11, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it was basically what you said. OK, you don't think I could play in the NFL because you didn't pick me. I got something for you when we play against y'all. So that's you great. Know, you know, so, yeah. So that motivation to you for you, um, obviously, that's that that doesn't go away. You know, you keep that that fire, you know, burning inside you. And you're putting it well. I never really even thought of it as motivation. I thought of I'm really I'm getting paid for this. I'm bored my house, feed my kids, you know. Right. Uh, and but I'm getting paid to turn whatever they give me or even like you said, didn't even want to give me. Mm -hmm. I turn that into a personal challenge and that's always been fun for me. And right. uh, so, yeah, I, I, but I guess, yeah, that uh, motivate, you said it right. It's motivation. Right. It's motivation. Right. So let's get into the fun stuff now. Okay. All right. And uh, let's get yeah, serious so, and talk about fun. Yeah. So what yeah. is, so with rampage? Yes. What is your favorite character? If you have one, I know it's tough. No, it's not tough at all. Oh, okay. So I just, what's that favorite character? I, gotta, I just got to check if my wife's within earshot. Um, That's well, what I got to do sometimes. I doubt you, you remember the arcade? It started yeah. with the three human photos and then the monster they turned into. Yep. And the bottom one was Ralph, and that was programmer, Jeff Nauman. And the middle one, and the top one was George. That was me, who turned into George. And the middle one was my wife, Lizzie. My wife, Ray, who turned into Lizzie. So if Ray's within earshot, my favorite character is Lizzie. There you go. And if she's not, George is my favorite. See, I can't do that because my wife is watching the TV show live on her phone. So if I say anything, I better be real because she's going to come down the stairs. You're going to hear her yelling at me. She knows that anyway. She knows it anyway. I'm not I'm not I'm not divulging any real secret there. Right. Right. Uh, okay. She knows. That's awesome and awesome. Oh man, because yeah, though for the time, you know, for the you know, I know there was different um um my you know, I say I say different versions of the game. Yeah, so watch it. I, I you know, do a little homework on you. I did my research looking at the documentary of your company and of of uh, Rampage the game and how it went through so many changes. So from the changes, you know, going from different console to console, trying to get it to where it looks right. So where was your feedback? I know this is a question that was not on the list, but what was your feedback from going from each conversion from like the Megavox to the... the I was an arcade designer. No, I was an arcade designer. That's all I ever did while I was Got working at Valley Midway. So all the games I worked on from Spy Hunter to Arch Viral, oh, everything else, everything I worked on, I only did the arcade version. I came up with the idea. I convinced management to do it. Um, and, and it went out there and did more than any, that not more than the team expected. We all knew we had a hit, but when we said we want to do this, the boss said, no. So I went over his head and the head of engineering goes, I love it, but you can't do it because you can't eat people and they can't be the bad guys. So one by one, and it would have never got done. The top three guys in the company. No, no, no. Right. We started on it anyway. I wanted to make sure we could do what we were promising because we knew we had a hit. And the by an amazing coincidence, the top three guys got fired and the new guy came in. Mm. And he was from outside the industry. I think he worked at Montgomery Wards Retail. Okay. He came into Valley Midway and he said, don't worry, your jobs are fit, safe. I'll be starting Monday. I've got an open door policy. You can guess who was waiting outside his door at 8.59 Monday morning. Oh, Before sure. his, first, his first day of work, I was sitting outside his office. He said, yes, the game went out because of him, because he agreed to do it. The game went out, broke every earnings record there was. Right. But I, And with all my games, though, I never worked on ports. 
I would get the port. I would go, oh, that's cool art. I wish, you know, they'd done that or, oh, yeah. You got to change this a little bit. Well, I wouldn't. No, I had no influence. Basically, oh, okay. I was an employee. I was just. Okay. Uh, right. I'd been, I was hired as an animator. They called me a designer about one or two games before Rampage. And then oh, okay. Rampage was the first game. I always did the screen animation. I designed the characters. And then Rampage was the first one where the head of the art department downstairs, the pinball art, who always did the cabinet, goes, Brian, why aren't you doing the cabinet art? I was like, really? I can do that? Oh, cool. right. So after Rampage, all my games, I did all the cabinet, got to do all the cabinet art too. So yeah, I, I'm rambling. You, I told no, you. You're okay. I you're fine. You. You're fine. And yeah, seeing the cabinets, that's the best part of your, between the playing, the gameplay and the artwork on the side is the awesomeness. It's like, because you know right away. Now I know you. you. I'm like, oh, that's Brian's stuff. I, said, I know that guy now. Um, from the Twitch chat, we got Elliot D says, very popular game from back in the day. And then one of my kids that I coach, uh, Brian, he's so young, he didn't know. He doesn't know what Rampage is, by the way. <laughs> so he said, I'm just watching this instead of packing right. stuff to I'm move. I'm doing this with the wrong hand. Where is it? There it is. There's uh, George right next to me there. I don't know if you can you, see you're, it. You're, you're almost to. There you go. Other side. Other side. Other side. All right. No. Other way. Other way. There he is. There's right George there. right there. And that's Ralph right below him. Yeah. No, I'm not going to mess with the camera. I'll, I'll break yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, we talking. So we're starting to talk about rampage. So, so next question here for the rampage uh, conversation. So, how much was um, you involved in the creation of the movie? Because that eventually, obviously, the movie hits way year thirty years later. Sound almost right at the time. I'm one of my favorite things back in the day was we go to the trade show shows and they make little toys and little giveaways, and they didn't do that much for rampage. Uh, and I kept waiting for someone to do a toy. And or do anything with it. And although the game was a hit and made a ton of money for the company, mm -hmm. I, you know, I went on, I formed my own company after leaving Midway after yeah. 10 years and yeah. kept we'll making the game. Yeah. But Rampage kind of, I knew the kids in my neighborhood knew it because I had the arcade game in my basement. But as far as I was concerned, the rest of the world forgot about it. So 30 years later after Rampage, I saw something at trades that said, um, uh, you know, Warner Brothers, who now owns all Valley Midway or Midway and everything, mm -hmm. is thinking of doing a movie. So I immediately wrote to him. I said, look, I did Rampage. I did Rampage World Tour. I have these huge backstories. I can help you in any way you want. And I got a polite, don't call us, we'll call you. Uh, okay. I've had those calls. I've had those emails. So and a few years later, I saw The Rock attached, and that was interesting. And then all of a sudden, I, I saw I got an email inviting me to be an extra when they were shooting in Chicago. because mm. they And they knew who I was. So I said, yes, I'd love to. Spent a couple of weeks running around in, you know, 98 degree high humidity weather in a, yes. in a suit, in a business suit as an extra. And then the assistant director Someone told him who I was and said, he said, we're going to do a cameo. Would you mind shooting a cameo? Spent a whole afternoon running away from the Sears Tower, Willis Tower, as I'm imagining that it's falling on me, running behind a, a camera, you know, and it, it was hysterical. And, you know, you're, I'm going, man, it can't get any better than this. Then I get a call from a producer who says, you know, I've been wanting to contact you for a while, but for legal reasons i was advised you know he says but they can't stop me now because you're technically an employee of the film you want to come down to the studio and meet everybody mm -hmm. go to the and and i mean it was wonderful they were wonderful everything um man i could i will just gush i should right, all right. The time. it was fantastic so i didn't have any short answer i had nothing to do with the movie other than when I did meet Dwayne, and he was in the middle of a scene with uh, Naomi Harris, right. I was taking a picture with the producers and the director, and all of a sudden, from behind me, I hear, stop, stop, i got to be part of this. And he comes down, she comes down. Right. He, everybody says he's a nice guy. He is so much nicer than oh, that. Okay. Yeah, he, man, was, he was incredible. I mean, he... Uh, I am geeking out, of course. And, yeah. and when you're standing next to that guy, he's 300 feet tall. And <laughs> it was, 
everything about that was magic that I will never forget that I can't convey. You know, my dimples reach the top of my head, you know, when I start grinning about it. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to oh, stop. You're good. You're good. So you're I didn't good. really have anything to do with it. Right. Oh, and well, and my cameo got cut. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I got a story story too. I'll get to it a minute after this question from uh, JFK here from the chat. Uh, so JFK asks, what would have been George's backstory for the movie? Well, in the original game and in World Tour, there was this horrible um, company dumping toxic waste everywhere. And George, I don't remember which, but each of them, you know, one guy ate a bad hot dog. One guy, uh, you know, swam in a polluted I remember water. that. I do remember right. the bad hot dog. And then in World Tour, we really expanded on the backstory. It was a plan by the evil Eustace Demonic, who at the end of Rampage World Tour turns into a giant blobby monster himself who chases him around the moon. We had, there was so much, we, we could really push the first Rampage to its limit. Yes. You know, 768 levels, but there was, you know, the buildings changed, the names of the cities changed. And we kind of, because it was an early game, fans that came along later were like, why wasn't there a big movie at the end? Why wasn't, it's like, we didn't have room. So when we did World Tour, that, the other way, that way. Yeah. Um, when we did World Tour, we ton, crammed a ton of hidden stuff in there. I mean, I, I don't know if you played World Tour, the second one. That's what I played a little bit, of, not as much as the first one, but a Okay, bit. so you're, you're a little older now. Yeah. Uh, newer fans played more World Tour. You can go to hell and eat Hitler. In that game, I, yeah. I like we, that. we had a ball. I mean, there's so much hidden stuff in there. And again, I'm rambling. George George didn't have a backstory so much as we expanded on the the villain side. His daughter was the girl in the lab coat. Yeah. Uh, we added references to everything from aliens to uh, Indiana Jones. There was stuff in there. The um, uh, at 209, we had our own version of him in there. We took everything from movies and threw it in Rampage World Tour. That's not like something I would do for a movie. I would take all my movies from my childhood and they right. glue them in a blob and like, here you go. It, this you is going to sell. It, you can call it copying. You can call it homage. I think of Mad Magazine, which I grew up on. You know, yeah, I, I, like I, I, I could get it into the house. I, I had it. I was watching it. My friends would sneak them in. Cause my mom and dad, they were like, no, 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 get that magazine up. Oh, well, they, you had good raisins then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my parents, they're on me. They're on. Another question from the chat from Elliot. Yeah. He says, what was the most difficult part of your career designing Rampage? Making it. Great question. Um, I, a lot of people think that uh, ideas are difficult. Ideas are the easy part. Figuring out what you can do with the limitations of what you've been given, given to do it on is the tricky part. Rampage came out not because I loved King Kong, which I did, and Ray Harryhausen movies and all this. Right, right. Rampage was because uh, came out, we were in a meeting, and I said, look, I want to do background animation. And the, the one testing guy who was in this meeting, just five of us, said, you can't do that, Brian. They're not going to pay for it. They're not going to this. And that's like, but with it, you know, I see this and I want to do big characters and I want to animate. And I just finished a game where I'd done some big characters, but I wanted to animate the background to do more. You can't, you can't. And we're fighting. And finally, he said, Brian, you can animate a rectangle. What the hell are you going to do with an animating rectangle? So I looked at Sharon, the, the artist who put the bow on this Pac-Man. I looked at Sharon and I go, so... A building falling into itself, that's an animating rectangle. And what knocks down buildings? Big monsters. And that's when we knew we had the hit. But the hardest part is figuring out. So we didn't come up with Rampage going, we want to do this game where monsters are knocking down buildings. We started with, how can I make something that my hardware can't do? Something that told me I couldn't do, I had to figure out a way to do it. Right. And that what every, everything about Rampage was really, really, honestly, an easy development. The fact that all the little funny things, the guy on the toilet or the girl in yeah. the red dress, they were small. I could crank, crank, crank them out quickly. Um, I figured out how we could remove blocks and replace them to make it look like the building was damaged. Jeff, the programmer, got everything in there. And he was a great 
I work with, as an animator, you work with a lot of programmers and he was like me, uh, meticulous and very focused on the end result. He could tune a game like nobody else. And mm -hmm. I mean, so he's putting together rampage fell together very easily. It was about nine months okay. start to finish. And, uh, yeah, it, it was not a – that that was – I wish every development was like Rampage. So for, to answer the short version of that question was it wasn't difficult at all. It, it really wasn't. It sounds right. like it. It sounds like it. It sounds like you had uh, teamwork. Basically, teamwork makes the dream right. work, you know, having your, your, your partner that does the programming and you doing the artwork and they all collaborating every little detail. You know, you'll, you'll draw something and then you say, hey, what, what, how you can adjust that? You know, then you draw more. So that that that's the part that I, like I to hear. That's a good thing to emphasize because I mean, I, I met you at a show and I do shows that says Brian Cullen creator, and yeah, I came up with the game concept and I came up with how to do it, but it's a team effort. It's always yeah. a team effort. Uh, you know, Jeff was as much of a designer as I was. Mm -hmm. um, the the you know Sharon and Jim Belt and the, the sound guy, everybody. And back in those days, it was our whole department was was uh, management left us alone. The game took three to five people is all. Programmer, you're different. You work with different guys. Spy Hunter, the concept came from somewhere else. The programmer was implementing it, but almost every artist worked on it, and almost everything in that game came from an artist going, "Why don't we do smoke? Why don't we do? Why don't we add water? Why don't you know?" Yeah. So very collaborative now. Moving to other companies, as we did, we were bought out by another company at the end of the 80s. Mm -hmm. Different companies worked very differently. We were all one big happy group that helped, not happy necessarily, you know, guys kick holes in the wall from time to time. <laughs> right. But you go to a different company and instead of one big group of helping each other out, uh, you know, it was divided into we're working on this, they're working on this, and management pitted them against each other, Ooh. which is another way to, you know, manage yeah, maybe yeah and maybe. Uh, but it was different for me. I yeah. really, I was really glad I got to be part of a war, a creative group where everybody was just young and excited and more concerned with the game than the money. Yeah, okay. and, and and yeah, I would say as where you were at, you're definitely the ones that are definitely. You know what? I'll do this for the rest of my life. I don't care yes. what you know because yes. you got to have that feeling. So you mentioned it already. So where did the idea you started to go into? Where did the idea for Spy Hunter and then eventually? Yeah, you, you did Arch Rivals. Then the one I, 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 in the documentary, I saw the game, but I never remember the name of it. It was the one where you had the the knights playing like rugby. Uh, oh, pigs it in, pigs in. That's my favorite in my head to head arcade games. Yeah, that's uh, idea. I touch on Arch Rivals. Spy Hunter uh, was in the works when I got hired. Uh, it was like the second game I worked on because I worked on Dissatron first, and I I may be wrong here. Uh, I believe George Gomez who was technically a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. when I was hired. But like I say, we were all doing stuff. He was a designer. But the idea came from George Gomez, and the programmer was Tom Leone on The Spy Hunter. And it, um, most of us were in one long hallway, and Tom was, like, stuck away in the back corner of, like, a parts room or something. And management left us all alone, but they left him even more alone than anybody else. So he had like 18 months to do that game. So it was a really well-tuned game. And we all threw our ideas into it. So the basic concept was, okay, this is a spy car and you're knocking other cars. It was basically Galaga gameplay, except you could move upwards, if you think about it. Yeah. It's coming down at you and you got to either move around it or, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know for sure. I think George Gomez, who now does pinball for Stern, um, I believe again, okay. all of these things got to be, I believe, because you know, I'm old. Yeah. Uh, and then our rivals, our rivals after uh, Rampage, I did Xenophobe, but with a different programmer. And then yeah. Jeff Nauman, who I originally did uh, uh, Rampage with, um, comes in from a trip and he throws an airplane barf bag down on the table. <laughs> and I look and it says basketball. Now, he and I had done a game called Sarge where you controlled two different vehicles. And we always wanted to do another game where you controlled multiple characters. Right. And he said, this is it, Brian. This is what we've been wanting to do because it's basketball and you can do a pick and roll and you can do it and you can block. And I said, Jeff, you're 6'2". I'm 5'8". Do I care? 
about basketball? I said, I love the concept. He's like, well, you can do real basketball strategies. There's never been any kind of gameplay like this. And I said, no, I'm sold. I said, but for guys out there, players out, nerds out there like me, I want to be able to foul. Right. I want to be able to punch this guy out if I can't win any other way. I want to be able to pull his pants down. I want to be, you know, I want to bribe the referee. Um, and I that like that, you know, all the things that players should not do. Right, right. I love it. It's a video game. It's a video game. They can shoot. They've got a good percentage whether they're going to make it from outside the three-point line. That's all numbers. It is awesome. Players, is, don't make the players control that. Have them control the positioning. Have them control the t- timing. Pass it to the other guy. Call for the pass. And that was another wonderful – when the team's excited, the game's going to be great. That's what I've learned after 40 years. If the team is excited, the game's going to be great. And our rivals – I just had this confirmed uh, last year. I heard the rumors. Half We were halfway through our rivals mm-hmm. when we were bought out by our biggest competitor. Bally Midway sold the company mm. to this other company. Myself and Jeff were the only two video game designers they kept out of the whole company. Really? We finished our tribals for them, and the sales for our tribals single-handedly paid for the buyout. Mm. So if Bally had just hung on for two more months, they wouldn't have had to sell us. All right. So. But I just had that confirmed finally. I heard it way back, and nobody would ever tell me whether it's true or not. But I just heard that last year. That was confirmed finally that our tri- sales from our tribals paid for the Valley Midway. And then we did pigskin after our tribals. Pigskin. Yeah, yeah that yeah. one looks fun. I, it I is that. fun. It's a a fun. Fun. And you're controlling six guys with axes and clubs and setting fire to each other and you got trap doors on the football field yes, 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 yes. Like, is that a trap door? yeah yeah we oh, uh and that was going to be a football game it's going to be our tribal's football right. and Mid- or williams now was our new company and they said no we we um we've already got a football game in the works and i don't, don't even remember what it was called and we said okay we'll we'll call it rugby and we're no rules rugby and give them weapons, uh, Huns versus Vikings. And we had a ball with that. We had a ball with that one too. Man, I could tell because I see the trap doors. I see the malt. You had a, a puddle of water. Yeah, you could water them in the water. You could, uh, and, and the same like something. our drivers, you could pass through each other. You had guys that could, you know, only run so far and then they had to punt. Because they yeah, weren't allowed to go up field. Rugby rules. I play a little rugby after football, so I, I understand that. Um, so, yeah, seeing all that in the doc and just knowing the game I played, the two games I played, uh, Rampage 1, and then a little bit of the World Tour. And actually, we have a nice place here in uh, in the Green Bay area called Player 2. that has yeah. all the arcade cabinet games there, and they have both your games there. So I go, I'll always get a good two or three rounds in on there. It's going to be one day where I go in and I'm going to defeat all – the levels, you know, <laughs> spend all that time in there on a, on a Saturday. No, no, not by yourself. No, Rampage had 768 <laughs> levels. We never thought anybody would get through it. Maybe I had to second, 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 you know, second guess that one. Okay. Second. Yeah, no, we never thought, but the kids did because we let you buy in. It was, right. you know, uh, oh, never mind. I could get into all kinds of stuff with that, but uh, right. I'll go back to your questions. All right, got a few more questions here left to, before we get into my fun conversation of this or that. So, what was the hard? You kind of mentioned some hard, you know, some bumps in the roads a little bit on the in your path, um, being an artist, being a creator for Midway for Bally. Um, so, what was the hardest part? What was something that you haven't mentioned? The hardest part about working as an artist in the video game industry? Um, like I say, ideas are the easy part, um, and then in Right after Pigskin, we formed our own company, and there's a whole story there. For EA, EA basically wanted to hire uh, hire Jeff and I, and, and we said, no, we, we like living in the Midwest, and they mm-hmm. wouldn't work remotely. So they finally said, uh, well, what if we just give you the money to start your own company? Okay. I could do that. So we started Game Refuge, and I've been very lucky in for most of the last 30 years that people come up to us tap me on the shoulder and go, I need a game for this system or I need a game for this, whatever it is. And um, the the um, 
so I never really, through most of my company years that I've been running a company, mm -hmm. I haven't really had to do too, too much business other than learning contracts and how contracts work. And you make a mistake in this game, Definitely. you're not going to make it again. Um, but I tell people now that are wanting to get in the industry, the hardest part for me is not that I never took a business class in college. And I never, uh, because we're basically always a small com company, somewhere between you know, a dozen to 30 people. Um, I never had the good sense to hire a, a good business guy. Jeff and I, or just after Jeff left myself, just kind of figured it out as we went along. And I think as a result, we never grew our company like most people would expect you to do. Um, and which has been fine because we've been busy for 30 years. Um, right. That's but, a good thing. but the hardest thing for me was always the business side. I did get very good at contracts. Um, so that side, I finally got a handle on, but how to do, you know, finally I learned over the last 10 years, hire business people, hire right. guys who are going to find the money, hire guys who are going to understand social media and have teams, testing teams, stuff like that. Or is it organizational stuff of the team uh, beyond the game design team has always been the toughest part for me. The yeah. game design team, I got. We're all doing this. We're all having fun. But the actual business stuff to keep yourself getting paid and, and that kind of thing, that took me a long time to learn. So I would say that was the hardest thing. Yeah. I mean, it's something where, as you, you already mentioned, with like with social media now, that's new to you right. and, and me, you know, with, with social media coming into the, I say the fray of what is already part of business for years on end, you know, when you bring in social media, that's a whole nother sector that you got to learn and how to use, how to manipulate for yourself, you know, and how to get your name out there, how you use it to get fans or get followers or sell stuff, you know, it's, right. you right. gotta, like you said, hire somebody to do that because he's like, man, my brain's going to break. So one more thing that pops up that I got to do, um, even with me and my stream, I have a team of, of two people right now. It's three of us total. It's Notorious yeah. Afro who's, who's on, who's in the chat. And then my, my co-host, John, who's not here today. So it's us three, you know, and then really at home, you know, I got my support here with my wife um, upstairs and she does a few things every now, you know, help me out. She feeds me, you know, she keeps me. There you go. There you know, go. But, you know, it's that, but yeah, it's that, it's that always constant movement of, like you said, reading contracts. I remember it was like halfway through my career playing ball, playing football, where I, I started to read my contracts and I started to really get it to yeah. understand what every and verse the, that means. The devil's in the details, man. The devil's yes. in the details. And you learn that. And fortunately, I did. I learned that pretty quick. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, almost every, I'm, you know, for me, I was. I like to have been very lucky, very mm -hmm. blessed that I fell into the industry when I did, that the things yeah. I thought were funny, other people thought were funny. Um, and I like the kind of challenges that you have to like if you want to be a designer. Yeah. So, but the business side, I always kind of let go because, well, people are coming up to me and asking me, so what more do I got to do? You know, exactly. 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 So uh, to wrap this up real quick, last question yeah. here. So what's next for you? I, I got your website up here where people could go to your website. I have your social media running here on the screen. So oh, okay. I got your website of Game Refuge. I checked it out. Got some fun, you know, fun items that we can, you know, actually purchase, you know, stuff that's actually out of stock, which is good, you know. Um, <laughs> but what's, what's what's next for you in 2022 and beyond? <clears throat> OK, um, I officially retired this year, two okay. months ago. Um, so, um, theoretically I'm retired. However, uh, I've, what, one of the great business people I just hired last year funded, uh, a game. We, I've been wanting to do a sequel passion pot project for me of general chaos, which right. was this huge, uh, Sega Genesis game we did for EA back when we first formed game refuge okay. and general chaos. I started it like eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. I tried to start a Kickstarter. And the day I started on my tour that my social media guy set up around the country, went to the indoor kids for a podcast back then, which was still a fairly new concept back then. Uh, uh, on my The day I went out there, I found out I had cancer. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So the, the tour fell apart. The, we, the, we never, the whole promotional thing that I, 
we set up, fell apart, right. and then kind of had to downsize the company quite a bit. And then three years ago, I'm ready. We're going to do this. We're going to do General Chaos 2. I announced it to the world. Fans came out and said, yes. You know what? And you know what happened three years ago? It was spring about this time. Oh, it was COVID, yes. Yes. And so it kind of went on to hold again. We continue, I continue to make games for clients and I'm doing other things. But finally, just for right now, we are working on General Chaos 2. Major snafu. <clears throat> snafu of course, the, an acronym for situation normal all fouled up and uh I like it. and uh so we're i'm working on that and that's what is my 2022 project we've got a couple of little other things where uh uh i'm working on but most of my time is i've actually stopped doing stopped taking new shows like the one i was at last week or then up with you in two weeks right. ago for this summer because i've got to pour everything into this game Exactly. It's going to be a ball, and we're having fun with it. We're having a lot of fun. I've got a great team. So that's what's new for me in 2022. Uh, probably first out as a PC game. Not probably. Going to be first out as a PC game, but I'm fairly nice. confident it's going to go everywhere. Um, All right. That's the big passion project, General Cast 2. Um, and that was not my website, by the way. That was my oh. store. Oh, my sorry. Website, yeah. Probably better that you didn't show my website. I don't think it's been upset, updated since the movie. So the rocks. Oh, I, I have it. I have another bit. link. Yeah, I have another link here on the bottom of the screen. That might be your your website there. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And so, actually, one more question from the Twitch yeah. chat here. It says, "What advice would you give to students who would like to get their foot in the door in the game design industry?" <sighs> That's from Hawk versus Spawn. It's like I. If you watch, we're watching the whole thing at the beginning of this, I, talk, I stumbled into it. So I really wish I had better answers. I've hired guys over the years, lots of guys, some of whom are doing, uh, you know, working as animation directors for Pixar now. So I've hired, hired a lot of guys out of school. I'll tell you what I think of as someone who's hiring people is I want to see um, stuff as much as your degree. I want to see stuff you did on your own for passion. Mm -hmm. So if you can't afford to go to the high-end schools, grab a game engine and create mods for a game you like. Um, if you've just got a couple of friends that you are going to do this and they're going to do this, do so, don't do, do don't set out to do this because you know what? Someone's going to get tired if you're not all doing it on your own and and if you're not paying each other you're getting paid for it because game designers game developers today uh, because the tools are so great you can do a lot but if you try to overdo too much to begin you're not going to finish and it's hard to maintain that do something this big and then this and you get it done and even if it's only a ball bouncing now i'll move on to a ball bouncing and then something hitting it and then a ball bouncing and some get this done and then have fun and start over and get this done. Learn from your mistake. Yeah. The smaller you make it, the more you're going to enthuse yourself and the people you're working with and keep everybody inspired. If you get things to a state that's like, okay, we're done with that. Now right. we can do more or we can do a second thing, but it's harder to keep people because it's a team effort. Like I said, it's harder to keep your friends motivated. You may find several people online that are going to say, yeah, I want to work on this with you. And then, oh, sorry, my my hours at the Target store went up, so I'm not going to be in this week or I'm tired or I'm not doing this. Right. Small stuff, keep everybody enthused, work on your people skills. Obviously, I still need work on mine, but <laughs> We're be, more like I'm on. be more like I'm on. Work on your people skills and keep your <clears throat> friends motivated. And do what's fun. It's corny. I have to say it. Follow your heart. Yes. Uh, that is that's what it's that. all about. Yeah. And then take any job you can get. I mean, the don't the be picky. Artist, don't be picky. Exactly. Uh, if you're really talking about getting your foot in the door, which is what the question really was, take any job you can get. Um, I came in as an animator. They were letting me reskin games within three months just because they saw something I was working on and said, let's take this boring game and we'll make it fun. And it went into production. It worked. Mm -hmm. uh, the girl who um, 
was, uh, you know, the artist who trained me and put the bow on Ms. Pac-Man, she started as a secretary. And oh, wow. they said, oh, you know, yeah, I can do. She became one of their first artists. So artists and animators. So get in the door because a lot of companies have proprietary stuff too. You may know Unity and they may be use, using Unity. But if they say, you know, if you can show that you made this thing with Unity, people like me who are hiring know darn well yeah. that if you can do this with this, the tools can be taught. They yeah. can't teach creativity. They can't teach that which you're going want to bring. Now, I'm talking about people that are designing. Right. If you're a particular type of artist or musician, do stuff. Do it on your own. Do it with friends. And I'm repeating myself. Okay, I'm, I'm stopping. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> one of my, one of my, uh, I mentioned him earlier, Jay Bick. Uh, he's in here in the chat. He said, "Is it?" And this one, I could kind of help you answer this one. I said, "Is it more about credentials and skills, or more about people you know in the industry?" And you kind of touched on the skills. It's like have the skills down, no matter what. At the end of the day, regardless of who is in the industry that you may know, um, and the credentials they have, or the credentials you are, you have, make sure you when you when it's your time to show up. When they say, all right, we need you to draw this, knock it out the part. So definitely have the skills down to make it happen. This is more an answer to getting your foot in the door. Exactly. Network, and with something I didn't have to do, and I really still don't do because I keep my head down until I'm done with a project, and then I pull it out of the sand and look around. Which you should but, do, yeah. Yeah, but people, I should network more. Networking is that thing that was invented or at least – identified is very important in the yes. industry, uh, but uh, credentials and skills, way, way, way more important. I mean, Jeff and I, and well, games that I worked on at Bally did not go beyond deadlines. And I only found out like 10 years later after I'd been in the industry that that's not the norm in the industry. Almost everybody, I was told by a guy going to another company that <clears throat> you're working here, lie to the front office. And if you got a deadline coming up, put a bug in it. And I'm like, really? <clears throat> and, but that is more, but credentials. And by that, I mean the fact that I've got a reputation for not ever going long on a game unless the client wants you to. Right. Um, that's, that is, I feel, I feel like that's brought me as much or more business over the years than uh, the fact that I did this game and it made a lot of money. That may be why they noticed me, but the credentials don't hurt. The network, I think, is real important, uh, but I don't know how to do it well, so I'm going to put that there. Uh, no, no, no problem. It, yeah, you still, I mean, still something you got to learn. You know, yeah. always got, is always Absolutely. making sure you, you always got to learn stuff to get better at your craft. And so yeah. thank you, uh, Brian. And, for take a, and, and take a business class. Is that, <laughs> yeah, that, that will help. Yeah, yep, yeah. definitely. Because I know I've done that in the last 10 years just to give me more knowledge of how to communicate, how to talk to companies, the how to present myself and all that fun stuff to make sure, you know, I get what I'm asking for out of the support or the partnership of sponsorship with the company. So, um, Brian, I got your information, like I said, on the bottom of the screen, on Twitter, on Facebook. Thank you. I want to say thank you for answering the questions. If you got a little time, we got a fun segment here called This or That coming up. I kind of mentioned to you uh, okay. backstage before we went live here. So right. I'm going to go. Does it involve this. drinking or undressing? Because I don't do that on podcasts. Neither. Neither. Okay. Then I'm all good. <laughs> we're good. All right. So we're going to head into this or that. This or that all right brian so i kind of mentioned to you the questions i kind of give you like a i gave you an example question you know like marvel or dc or you know uh okay. what's it uh, lizzie lizzie or, or what was the other name of the george, george. george. So, yeah. yeah you pick you got to pick one so here all we right. go with uh this or that the first this or that question is have many kids or or just one split the difference i'm gonna say two <laughs> so two. many. That means many. Okay, that means many. Right, two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm definitely, well, I'm definitely many because I'm I'm a father of five, four girls. Holy like, cats. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. And we were talking before the show. You're busy. You're insanely busy. Now yes. that you've got five kids on top of everything we were talking about. I started early. I started when I was 20, and now they're all out the house. And wow. they're taking okay. care of themselves. They got jobs. They got careers. So, 
we did our job. So yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. and 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 now you're taken care of. So yeah, good. Exactly. As you get old, as we get older, yes. Like back and it's like okay, bring it on back. Bring it on back. So I got time on my hands to do. That's why I'm so busy. I fill up my schedule with the things I love to do. Podcast, that, talk about video. That, podcast. You can't ask for more than that. Yeah, podcast to talk about football. And so I'm going to develop one, another podcast where I'm going to talk about another favorite genre of movies and video games is horror. I love horror movies and I love horror video games. So that's my next next uh, goal coming down the line here. And from the Twitch chat, is anybody putting in on this? And it says, Hawk versus Spawn said, I'll take twins. He has a boy and a – you have a boy and a girl? Are you I, have, that? I have a boy and a girl. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. And yeah. as a hawk versus spawn, what about you? You say I take twins, but boy and a girl. So let's see here. And then Jack. I, I thought that his name was the question. Hulk versus spawn. Spawn, I'll take spawn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like spawn too. I'm with you there. Oh, uh, good shot. Todd McFarlane. I love his figures. Yep. Great. Yeah. He actually, yeah. Great action figures. So Jackie Chili's 92 says, I got one kid with another on the way. So you're, you're many. You're one of many. Um, you're one in the mini area. And then also he says, so he says mini, just to clarify the question there. All right. Next question here for you, Brian, marry a workaholic or marry a person of leisure. Oh, gee. I always want to split the hairs on these. Um, <laughs> Got to be decisive. Big one. I'm going to go with workaholic. Mm, okay. I'm going to go with workaholic because the gal I married I married because she was a person of leisure, and I was delighted to discover she's a workaholic. Ooh, so both, dual. Yeah, that's why I said I, I didn't mean to, I wanted to pick one definitively, but that's because I lucked out. Right, she, right. Was, she is all about having fun and dropping and having fun at the drop of a hat. But when she's not, she's a workaholic. Boom. So I lucked out there. Got you. I'm, I think I lucked out the same. That's the way my wife is built. She she is a grinder when she we have to get things done. But then when she wants to party, oh, we, she, we go hard in the paint. That's what I say. We go hard in the paint. <laughs> like, on, like on arch rivals, we go hard in the paint. <laughs> on punches, coming off the just elbowing, you know. Tech, you know, no, was there was there actually foul call? Fouls called in arch rivals? No, no one, no one ever. Okay. That was the point. No one ever called foul. I mean, yeah, you punch somebody, you deck them, you pull, pull them, you could tackle them. Right. Okay. Uh, and the game just went on around you. So got it, got it. So we got Hawk versus Spawn says why my wife, he also his wife is also a workaholic, keeps him busy. Um, and then JF Cake says, Plus, he, he he's looking for a person of leisure, gotta enjoy myself. That's right. his reason. So there you go, JF Cake. And Big Boom Howard says leisure as well. And then JF Cake, he also kind of with you, Brian. He said, I like to split hairs <laughs> on these answers. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right, here we go. Next, next question up here. It is. Cry when you're happy or laugh when you are sad. Mm. Oh, th that's easy. Cry when I'm happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I've done that. I've done that yeah. as a kid. Yeah. Be so happy. Like, a, like you know well, what? It, well, I guess I'm at my age, I'm thinking memories. All yeah. right. So I I'm see a memory. It that, yeah, someone come good. up on the, uh, on the, you know, the Google off the TV. You know, I, I keep the photos. The photos, yeah. Photos on there all the time. And some will come up and then, yeah, then it's like, okay, yeah. Happy yeah. memories will make me cry. I don't, I never, now if that's, should you laugh when you're, oh, I'm splitting hairs again. Uh, <laughs> yes, laughter is the best medicine when you're sad. Sure, but yeah, no, I cry when I'm happy. That's a hundred percent correct statement right there. Tears are signs of happiness when you can yeah. laugh and cry at the same time. There you go. We have a few people in the chat. Big Boom Howard says cry when happy as well. Um, and then we had I know JF Cake. And then Jay Big says cry when happy makes everything funner. You're laughing so hard, just tears yeah. flow, yeah. and you remember those moments. Boom. There's, there's your answer, Brian. That's right definitive. There. That's definitive. Yeah, and then also Hulk versus Spawn hits it on the head. Here, where is it? Where does it go? Here we go. A good cry seems healthier. There it is. Yeah. And that's part of it, you know. Yeah. I, know. I think it's all full circle. Here we go. Next question up. Here we go. Is going on a date with a character from a cartoon or a musical? I know this cry went across your brain. Yeah, this this is this is definitely, you know, uh cartoon. So a cartoon right. character. Cartoon, which, cartoon, which cartoon character would that be? Well, I mean, if it's a date and an A, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you everybody's seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit, right? Oh, Jessica Rabbit. Well, I would. I didn't say that. My wife was in earshot. I was. I was thinking of Elmer Fudd, but yeah, yeah, probably, probably Jessica, since you brought her up. Oh, oh, we got Elliot D says Betty Boop. Oh, he he might be old school. Okay, yeah, real old school. Yeah, I mean, I remember Betty Boop when I was a kid. Uh, uh, we got Jay Bix says cartoon. I mean, have seen. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. Okay, yep. Yeah, and she's got that uh, special power that could get really interesting. That whole stretching yes. thing. Yes. This is going to places I'm not sure. This might go down a bad lane. I, I'm not sure we need to go any farther <laughs> on this, uh, this oh, line. I got to get my answer now. I don't know where to go with this now. Oh, man. Oh, Why, are we thinking uh, musical? Oh, um, music? No, I haven't seen, I've only seen a few musicals. Okay, so you were thinking cartoon. You've got to have, where, where have you gone there? Um. Tell me not Daffy Duck. No, no. If I go, <laughs> let's see. So if I go on a date with a cartoon character, Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. Kim Possible? Kim, Kim Possible was hot. My kids were into that. I'm Yeah, well, I, I wasn't into it, but I'm just thinking yeah. now from an artist standpoint. Golly. I'm like stomping the road. It, I'm going to have to come back to that one. Okay. It'll, it'll pop back soon because right now I'm drawing a blank. Because I'm not, because that's a rabbit was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to go with the, the, the Twitch chat and say, this is incredible. Okay. Yep. To get an answer in. There you go. <sighs> All right, now we're getting to the final two questions here that are in your neck of the woods, all right, that you probably had to think about this from time to time, maybe when you and your programmer had a little time to talk. He was like, you know, going back and forth between something. So this question right here is, oh, wait a minute, is it there? Oh, wait a minute, did I move it? Oh, yeah, I moved it. Boom, there we go. Rampage the video game or Rampage the movie? <laughs> oh, Rampage the video game. No, oh, I yeah. thought it was going to be an easy one, but I was like, let me just add. Yeah, no, that's, that's a no-brainer. That that one changed my life in so many ways. Uh, Rampage the movie was a delightful, uh, you know, tears of joy kind of thing 30 years later. But, yeah, Rampage the video game. Okay. All right. And for everybody in the chat, everybody, I think they're all with you. They love the game, the video game side of it. I did, too. That's the whole, like. When I, once I saw the artwork, I was like, right away. I'm like, oh, my God. And I love the movie. I like what they did with it. I, you know, I will say that. But uh, I was wondering. Yeah. I was going to ask you that question, but you kind of answered it. I wasn't sure. But it sounded like you liked it because you're between in it and then getting a the scene with The Rock, with Dwayne. You know, I thought that was pretty neat that he came over. Yeah. No, it was, yeah. was tremendous. I, but I, do, I did like what they did with the movie. They kept the humanity with George being kind of, you know, the other two were just monsters. But. Right. The, game, the monsters are the victims. Let's face it. They didn't ask to be that way. It's not yeah. their fault. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. All right. So last one. This one, when I read it now, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know. I think I thought too hard into this one. So drawing the art for Rampage or making the video game for Rampage, is that kind of the same thing or is that two different things? Yeah. No, that's 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 uh, that's not a this or that. This is That's a this and this. Okay, that's what same. I thought. When I just same. read it, I'm like, oh, this is the same question. I mean, it's the same I mean a lot of those games, people uh, assume that I, I I, did most of my drawing after I created the game. I created okay. all the art on the, the arcade machine. I had my computer next to it. I'm pushing pixels. I'm a pixel right. pusher. After I created the art for the game, then I would do my pen and ink for the cabinets and for stuff like that. So I didn't actually draw i mean up, except for a sketch that i might have attached to the um, game design document right you know here's a giant ape but here's a building i didn't really draw my characters i even though pen and ink was my medium i would wait till i designed the character for the game and then i would let myself put him put pen to paper and have a lot more fun with it oh, so they would but really it was the same thing uh, drawing the art was and if or if 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 I just said that, then they are two different things. And if I didn't do the second, I couldn't do the first. Uh, both are fun in two different ways. So I can't answer that. You can't answer that. Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, Brian, thank you for joining in uh, this or that. Um, I don't want to hold you any longer because I'm about to go into the rest of my show. We've got quick hidden news. I'm sorry if I delayed that. I warned you that I do ramble, man. So yeah, it's okay. Stop apologizing for that. We like the rambling because you're somebody that, like, for one, like you know one more, you you won you know one more person that you that you inspired the passion of video games, which is and me. you have no idea how much I love hearing that. 
I, oh I mean, it really God. means a lot. Every single person I met, meet that tells me that I had no idea people remembered until yeah. just a few years ago. And uh, oh no, people remember because I time. found that out. And you can't, you can't. I'm sure you can imagine how great that feels at, right. at my age. You're welcome. It. Thank you. All right, and it was a. Uh, I say like for the Mount Rushmore of my video games as a kid, it was Super Mario Brothers. It was Legend of Zelda. And then once I got that was at home because of the system, yeah, you know, yeah. came home. But once I went out to the arcade, it was Rampage is no right, it's right there. And then um Pac-Man. Okay. And then it's Pac-Man and Galaga. Yeah. So that's my Mount Rushmore. Yeah, of, you're pretty old school there. Of, of, yeah. of arcade going to tip you go in the cabinet and you're sitting in there like this, and you're hitting that button fast. You're like, duh, 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 duh. come on, get the get the builder down. And you've got to remember. That if you're at the top, you did all the damage. At the bottom, you got to jump off. Because if you don't right. jump off, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to get damaged. I'm um, dealt. And when it, I mean, we did those games. One more, one more last little tidbit. Yeah. We did those games. Uh, we had to sell them to operators who wanted to kick kids off in 30 seconds so they could get another quarter. And the kids wanted to play forever. Right. And our job was to make both of them happy. So, you know, I made games that make me laugh because I figured that's – Gonna make somebody reach, but the best thing we did in Ramp Rampage, because you turned into the little naked person, yeah. and, it, and if you put a quarter in before you got off the screen, you could keep your score and continue. And then the fact that we let other players eat you before you got off the screen, we would have total strangers or friends. It didn't ma matter. You got three players on there. One guy dies. He starts going. He's immediately digging for that next quarter so he doesn't lose his score. And then you got one or two other guys going, he's dead. Go eat him. And then because that way their score stays up and he's got to start over. That game broke every earnings record of its day, and I think a, lot, a big part of it was just that one little silly thing that we did for laughs. But I did not know that. And it had, right yeah. Oh, really? Really? Okay. I did not know that. All right, that's the last thing I'm going to. I'm going to let you go on with the rest of your show. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. This was really fun. You We're going to have Brian, to. Uh, you're going to have me jumping in that game right after this to try to okay. get my person well i don't have to use quarters no more we have emulators now that I, the game is on i could play it but i never got any quarters game. anyway so right. just it's have so, fun with it got it so all right from the twitch chat we got jay big man said brian have a good one thank jackie, you jackie this has been too, fun. Said, it's been a lot thank of you fun. for your time as well so again brian thank you appreciate you and i hope everything goes well i'll be contacting you just to keep the conversation going Always, keep, I want I want to keep updated with you, so I'll stay in contact with you. My uh, right my business guy and my social media girl will probably tell me tell me if I haven't done it already to to look you up when General Chaos Two gets near its uh, first release. So we'll be talking again, I'm sure. I can't All wait! Right. Can't wait! Yes! <laughs> great, great. All right, Brian. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you welcome. much. See you. You're welcome. Bye bye. See you later. Talk to you bye later. Bye. Oh, Thanks, man. everybody. Yep. How do I get out of here? <laughs> I got it. I got you out of there, Brian. Oh man, that was awesomeness. Brian F. Colin, um, fantastic guy, and just a a person that, like you said, for the passion. And I kind of hear him when he says that, and how he gets, you know, he almost got choked up on there. And it, it is something like me, you know, for me, I related to me and my me playing football, where I didn't care about the paycheck it was more about me doing my job when i first got in there obviously later on as i got older i understood why how everything coincided on um, working together but i played for myself i played for my teammates my family and then the fans you know kind of in that order and so i was one of very few players that when i was on that football field i was giving all my got all i got it wasn't no doubt in my mind that i was not going to play every play hard or 100 percent and not saying players don't do that today, not saying players didn't do it when, in, during my time. But when you have a creator, artist or an athlete or whoever you are and what you do, you give your passion to it. But obviously you get smart going along the way you learn. Like he said, he learned the business side of things so he could understand how he needs to continue to grow. Um, and that's some that's, that's that's the important part of being successful at whatever you do. You know, you look at LeBron James and 
you know, beyond obviously some of the things that people that things that he's done that people like or dislike, but from a business aspect. And then obviously he loved the game on some level to get better at it, um, which obviously he's one of the right now greatest players playing today. Um, any other athlete from their generation, Michael Jordan, you know, you got you know, go from baseball, King Griffey Jr. to, you know, fo- hockey, Wayne Gretzky, um, content creators, you know, Nick Merckx, for example, or Ninja, um, just to name people that we know or are aware of. That stuff is not far away if you have the passion. And then after when you start going, then you have the passion, then you get smart with the business side of it and go keep going from there and digging and treasure, you know, trugging along, grinding and his gamers. We're built for it. We grind at Elden Ring. We grind at StarCraft. We grind at League of Legends, Halo, Madden, 2K, Tekken, Super Smash. So we have that. I say we have that trait about us. It's just the way you're motivated. If you're motivated more to keep going, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be people that's going to tell you no or you can't or you're not going to do that right now. There's going to be a whole bunch of that going on. There's going to be less people that say, hey, man, good job. Or I got you. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this money. I'm going to be a partner with you. I'm going to support you. It's going to be a lot less people that support you, that give you the motivation, that that then is then a lot, lot, lot more people that, that want to be against you. So just know that. And what he said, but he mentioned that. And that was the same for me in my career. You know, everything is going to be not just handed to you. You got to basically take it. You got to work hard to take it. And Hong versus Spawn, he put it in the chat. I've, I've been texting all my friends today. This right here, may the fourth be with you. And something I didn't do at the beginning of the show because I had too many things going on. I got to do the intro. So here's the intro. <laughs> One's a former NFL star oh, turned man. sports coach. So we're going to get on to that guy from my after wife. Intro, like, what you doing? I'm like, nothing. We're going to get on to Mark. And one's a bites. dad who can't stop playing Rocket League. Mm-hmm, these kids mm-hmm, these mm-hmm. days, they're like, blah, 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 blah. we're used to jump and run. Together, they welcome you to Amon Green's Gamers Lounge. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I didn't get that intro in. So, there's the intro, and here's the rest of the show coming at you. We got a quick hit news bite. So, me and if y'all tuned in last night with me, and my good friend Hank Basket, who's been on the show several times, um, we sat down and we gamed on Tiny Tina's Wonderland. So <laughs> I just want to let you know, full disclosure, we're, we look like two newborn baby calves trying to walk when we were trying to play this game. And uh, it was interesting. We were trying to, the, our game accounts weren't right, weren't connected. It kept saying we were offline when we weren't. Um, well, once we finally got going, that about an hour, that was the first hour of gaming. So I'm back streaming again. So if you watch me and you like to watch me stream, so come on, let's do it. But we, once we finally got going, we got playing the game of Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And what I found out about this game, it's obviously fun because it comes off the spinoff of Borderlands 3. And as you see the graphics, great design, great texture what I've seen from Borderlands and it's really cool how they, the animation works together with all the different elements they, they have you know the, like you see the fire right there the comedy behind it and then the creation of your character so the first 20 30 minutes I was building out my character so if you don't if you play stuff offline like D&D this is that kind of game but in a, in a in a video game standpoint so you build out your carrier your character from head to toe skin color hair design hair color eyes even you put eyeliner on your character you know which i, I think i've never done in creating a character but i've done that i've done it now in tiny tina's winter you know so um <laughs> i did all that and I think I gave my character an afro. And he has magic. You know, I have a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sorcerer or a magician. I got magical powers. I got my move where I could just like, it's almost like I'm dropping the beat on him or I'm dropping the mic. If you if you remember playing Def Jam, um, Vandetta, and you do your your like, your like hit move, it's like, boom, I drop the mic on people. I blow everybody up. I'm almost like, or I think I burn. I do, I shoot out fire and I burn everybody. So, but the game itself built just like, Borderlands 3, where you have your inventory, you have your rating of magic powers that you can select and deselect, and then your inventory, and you see Tiny Tina there. And so she is over the board, so it's actually, you're paying on a board, similar to D&D, like I mentioned. 
So just in D&D, you know, you got your, your character, you build it out, and then you got your dice. You roll it. You roll it to see where you're going to go and fight and what have you. So it's similar built of that. So if you think of D&D, if you play D&D, I just started playing myself, then you are playing or, you, or you're playing a game that is this game, Tiny Tina's Warden, is similar to that. So it's fun. It's a shooter looter. So that means you shoot people and you take things from them. Or you go find a chest, you unlock them. Me and my man Hank and then Mad Max, that was uh, one of my viewers, followers, some moderators, jumped in with us. And we were just running all over the Wonderlands, doing our gig, learning the mechanics because I didn't know how to like melee at first. And that's right stick, push down. Took me a little while because I was getting beat up. But I knew how to drop my ma my magic power or my ultimate, you know, and it has a, a, a 10 second, you know, reset before I could use it again. So you got to plan that out. But then you got really good weapons, you know, that rate up. So right now I'm at level five or six or seven. And I think your rating could go all the way up to maybe a hundred. I don't know, because in one area, once I get to area when I'm level 40, then I get these really powerful guns and weapons that I could play with, which I'm really excited about. Um, in the progression of this game, playing with Hank in his co-op. So you could play with, we, it was just three of us last night. So you could, I think you could play with more. Um, not just three people, but four, five, six people. It's a party. <clears throat> you have a game. If you have this game, it's on Epic Games. Um, you can have it on. It's on all platforms. I know that I played it on Epic Games, which is on my PC, but you can play it on Xbox, PlayStation as well. So I would say check it out. It's fun. Um, you can have a good time. So my game review, I give it a big five. If we're doing anything, five controllers. I don't know. Five thumbs up. I don't know. But five controllers right there. Get it. If you like to play co-op with friends online and have a good time and the, the animation, the comedy like in it is pretty good. It's pretty hit, hit on. You hear um, Tiny Tina always dropping in when you're fighting and all of a sudden you hear this voice comes in. It says some comic relief remark. I think you need to check it out. So Tiny Tina's one online. Check it out. I'm doing some free advertising for Epic Games. You're welcome. Um, download it on Epic Games or just go get the if you're a hard disk guy like me having that little CD or a cartridge, the old school stuff that we're about to get into in this next topic here. Um, another trip down memory lane uh, for me is here on as by way of gameindustry.biz found this fun article about the birthplace of Nintendo, which we know is over in Japan. And just reading this article, you know, it's just, you know, when if you're into gaming and you really want to really get if you're passionate like I am and find out things like for me, Nintendo was the system, you know, for some of you in this chat, I know JBIG, PlayStation 3 or 4, or PlayStation 2 was the first system that you played on. For me, it was the Nintendo. And so studying and reading this article about the history of Nintendo and where it basically started, I mean, it started back in 1889, okay? 1889, so that is almost 100 years before I had, a, had the... Nintendo, the, the NES in my home. So you're talking about 1889, the uh, Nintendo is a Copea. That's his name. That's so that was the actual, um, the first person. So I actually know it was Hiroshi Hamuchi was the great grandson of Nintendo Copia who founded it in 1889. And oh no, sorry, along with, so the company Nintendo Copia was founded in 1889 by, let me say this name right, Fuza. Yiro Yamuchi, Yamamuchi. And so he was also basically it was um, I think somebody just mentioned it in the chat. Nintendo was a playing card company. And so didn't know. I kind of heard that. But now I know I read the article, got the history of it. And it tells the story. So in this article, it tells the story how, you know, um, Yamamuchi, the first of them, you know, Yamamuchi got into the business and having to navigate just kind of like what we talked about myself and Brian here a few minutes ago of getting that company going, selling playing cards and having to deal with different bumps in the road. Like we mentioned, you know, he had to deal with the Yakuza, with this, the Japanese game, you know, um, crime syndicate over in Japan and them as a competitor to sell his cards because they were obviously gambling. And um, I think Japan banned gambling in 1882. So if you ban something, you tell somebody not to do something, somebody's going to still figure out how to do it. So Yakuza still had underground gambling parlors around Japan. And so with that being a competitor, um, Yakum, um, 
Yamamuchi basically made partnership with Yakuza, say, hey, you do your work over there. I'm going to do my work over here. We're going to you know, work kind of work simultaneously, but I'm not going to interfere with your stuff. You don't interfere with my stuff. And I'm going to try to grow my business the best way I can, you know, in this space. And that's what he did over the next hundred years from that moment with him to his grandkids and grandsons. You know, he had to basically adopt uh, a son-in-law because, you know, the laws, you know, in Japan, the culture is that you can't pass on a business to a daughter. So he only had a daughter at the time. So when she married, he adopted her husband to be his son to then take over the company and continue running the company moving forward. You know, but obviously before he passed, passed away. Um, so it's just, just a great little article. So for our gamers, you know, the ones that are passionate like me, I read this full article. I'm going to read this thing again to really know and understand where, just like I know where football came from. I know where football in Nebraska started. You know, I know football in Los Angeles. And I know the players that come out of the areas that I grew up in and sound. So this is similar to know that knowing the game that, this game console for me that changed my life where I knew that on Saturday I'm playing Tecmo ball or I'm going to play Super Mario Brothers or I'm going to play Legend of Zelda. I said those two games, last two games were the games that I was religiously playing that my mom and dad had to set a, uh, a, a hourly schedule for me. Say, Hey, you could play Nintendo for two hours then you got to go outside and play. So to find it out and all along with big boom, Howard, yes, I, I didn't have a television. I had Coleco vision. Um, that plays Zaxxon and Donkey Kong before I got the Nintendo. And then once I got the Nintendo, it was on, you know, and it talk, it goes on to talk about the Nintendo sales, you know, how they, you know, first it started off slow. Um, on before the sales, though, it was the interesting part of it where it talks about how uh, Yaka, uh, Yamamochi, Yamamuchi basically was basically, you know, getting into the world of introducing the cartridge to the industry where everybody of course was like oh no that that's we don't need that it doesn't fit it doesn't look good it doesn't this and that but he kept pushing and pushing and pushing and finally you know he ended up creating the cartridge and then selling it to other of competitors so people were telling him you know that the cartridge doesn't look good or it's not going to sell this that and the other and ended up becoming the reason why nintendo is still here because they made a cartridge and they were selling it and selling it to their competitors so I think that right there just shows, like Brian mentioned, you know, like I mentioned, you got to have that grind. No matter what people say, the negative side is going to come out first. But you keep grinding in what you do and understanding that you see the end of it. You see the purpose of what you're doing. And that was a big drive for that, because I think that that cartridge don't get invented. You don't have compact discs eventually that are now our games today. If you buy down, you buy the disc. And now, you know, mostly everything's digital. So that was a big movement for at that time and it talks about the numbers and all that stuff with of when they sold the cartridges and how that helped benefit the company and pushing into the the new times of today you know so just go to um gameindustry.biz check up a uh, birth the birthplace of nintendo read this article great article and uh going on shifting um shifting gears into the next topic here is if for all the call of duty fans we have the pro-am classic coming up this weekend and I know there's been a lot of um, a lot of leagues going on. We got Overwatch League going. The Halo Championship Series is back on scene with Halo Infinite. So just to give you a quick update of the um, Call of Duty League. So we got the Pro-Am Classic starting tomorrow here on May 5th. And the Pro-Am Classic, as, as I'm looking over, it has teams in here um, that are basically path to pro teams. So like a team called Team War um, right here. And then another one down here called Strike X. So these are the teams that are not quite pro. You know, they're probably the triple A of Call of Duty, Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty League teams. That's a lot. That's a lot to say. And so these are their, that team's opportunity to come and play against the pros. You know, Strike X has phase uh, Atlanta phase uh, tomorrow at five o'clock. And then also they have Toronto Ultra earlier in the day. So they're playing against some heavy hitters. Team War plays against London Royals. And so that program series. And this is this is also counts towards the teams that are in the Call of Duty League towards their playoff push in terms of their record um right now the standings i believe anna alana phase is, is leading the league right now with a 15 and 5 record and optic texas right behind them on london royales brings up the top three with 11 and 6 record so i know i've watched it for a couple games a couple series i'm not think last year um it was uh new york subliners with the uh, clayster 
as their or two years ago won the championship. So they're struggling right now, sitting at four and nine. So I kind of, you know, this is just not something that's just great to have here. Obviously, all the leagues that, that are going around here that are being played is, is outstanding. But yeah, just to give you all an update, you could go to the website. They got fun things for the fans. You could go in here and pick them. So it's it, it doesn't I kind of read it up the rules and stuff. It's it says it's not gambling, but it's the closest thing that a Call of Duty fan have. You could come here and pick the games, you know, obviously pre, you know, pick the games before they're played, who's going to win, who's going to lose. Um, and you get CDL points for yourself as a fan. So go there for that part of the website where it says pick them. Um, then obviously you can get the uh, season standings as we see here um, and then schedule coming up. Like I said, this is the mid season turn of the program classic. And then we go into Toronto. So the next, next week's games is going to be over in Toronto or I say up in Toronto, up into the, where I'm at, up into the, I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm up, up into the left of me. Um, Toronto Series Major for the Ultra is going to be there, and then the season finale is going to be in New York and Boston Major. And I believe Boston has a new team. Um, I saw them on the roster here of teams. It's the Boston Breach. I believe that is a new team here on the Call of Duty League roster. So what would you say there, Jay Big says, Cl Clayster is making a return after playing. He was playing Valorant? As he's playing Val, he's playing in challengers with Felio and two others. Okay, gotcha. All right. And good question here, Jackie Chili's Amon. What do you consider your main game? Um, one of the games I mentioned, really easy. Halo Infinite or just Halo. Um, that is my main game. I play Madden. That'll be like my secondary game. And then now I'm trying to get into NBA 2K. League of Legends, Valorant. I want to get I want to get mouse and keyboard down. I, I want to get it down. I know a little Spanish. It's like me learning Spanish. I know just enough to survive. So I want to have just enough knowledge, keyboard and mouse knowledge to play Valorant and be good at it. I'm not saying I'm going pro. If any game I'm going to go pro in, it would be Halo and it would be Madden. To answer your question there, Jackie Chili. So thank you for coming in. Um, the chat here, first time. Um, so yeah, go there. Go to call of duty.com, call of duty league.com. Check out the standings. If you're a fan, if you're not a fan, just go check it out. You know, esports is still new to, to everyone and it's growing. Um, this is not the only league. Overwatch has a league. Valorant has a championship series now. Um, uh, Super Smash Bros. has a circuit. Tekken, Street Fighter, Dota, whatever league you think of or game you think of, there is a tournament league format or there's a seasonal, um, um, what is a regional league like call of duty league like overwatch league it's regional it has los angeles team it has a, a houston team it has a new york team it has teams overseas um in england and over i believe in asia as well so if you're not if you're new to this check it out it's pretty cool and if you're the parent or the administrator school teacher that is just getting into the, the the swing of things and you're hearing you know your kids talk about it or you're hearing a group of kids talk about cdl or OWL. Hey, ask the question. What's that lead? Find out. Um, check it out. So it's uh, some fun, interesting information. And good thing is we got internet. We can check that out anytime, any place um, going for you. So now coming up, we got game releases for y'all. Release the games. It's time for the game releases. Game, game releases. releases. All right. We got game releases. Here. We got fun games. I'm going to talk about, I already talked about Tiny Tina's wonderlands um so we got here i got some crazy games here fun i brought in i thought i didn't want sure if brian could stay long or how long he could stay with us but i got this one game that's kind of that an alien s alien 80s esque so wildcat gun machine here oh do i get to replay it oh is that the end oh well let me oh, it's just me you know i'm doing my best here uh, 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 let me tuck off of there real quick Little technical difficulties. That's all right. Get this fixed. Then we get into the story of Machine Gun Wildcat. Let me get this all set up for you. A little, a little slow. That's all right. In a god, the sun all right. There we go. So Machine Gun Wildcat, it, as you see it, explosions everywhere. It's an explosion roller coaster ride. So enter a bullet hell dungeon crawler where you take on hordes and hordes of disgusting 
fleshy beast as you see here in the video with a wide variety of guns mech robots and cute kittens um i don't i get the cute kittens this is video game world. so exploring the sprawling maze-like dungeons in lab and liberate giant mech robots from demonic elders so this game is on all platforms i think you find it on uh on steam for like 12 bucks which is a great price um this is a game with the price i'm definitely going to download and play and give y'all some feedback next week show because this is that 80 feel. I'm trying to think. It was one of them butt masher games, as you see here. You, you could turn, once you get the gun, you could gear up like it says and then change into one of those big robots. And then the robot, you know, then you get the kitty cat too on top of that. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure this out. So machine gun wildcat or my, wildcat gun machine, excuse me. Might as well say machine gun wildcat. That sounds better, don't it? Uh, armed in the making of this trailer. There we go. They got to put their their disclaimer in there. The animals weren't hurt in that uh, next one. Uh, in that game, in the making of the game. And then another fun game here, which I like seafood a month ago Valorant when that came out. This application is. If you remember seafood, this is a game similar to seafood. It's not seafood, but it's close to it. Getting here. Just making the edits here. Uh -uh. And this wall, this game is called Trek to Yomi. So it's available on day one Game Pass. So that means it's on your Xbox. So Trek to what? Oh man. I keep saying. Ah, I didn't reset the video. <laughs> Sorry. It's on Game Pass. So it's a cinematic action adventure game that follows in trailing story of Hiroki during his fall against the evil, the forces of evil. So experience a heroic return to make good on his failed promise to save the people he swore to protect. So you can find this game. This game is uh, just like from Tiny Tina's, it's on the Unreal Engine 4, it's on our platforms, so you can find it. And it's actually set at a pretty good price. I believe it's like $25.99, $24.99 or 24 or no, actually less than that, $17.99 on Steam. but. Like I said, on all platforms, and you could go around hacking up. I love the samurai gameplay. I don't know about y'all, but I've always been any fighting game that involves a samurai, so Sifu or Kung Fu, any of that is good to details, good artwork here. I mean, you get nasty and gritty right there, chopping off. That was he just chopped off the head there. Yes, he did. And then he has a self-made shotgun right there. He just pulled out on. But it's similar if you if you play Sifu last month um, and been playing it and haven't beat it. I've still been playing it. I got, haven't got to it. I don't know if it's the same design in terms of you you die, you got to go back and try to get further. But Trek to Yomi looks very fun. Anything with a samurai sword with a katana, it's fun. I would say I advise you to get this great price, 17 bucks. It's not going to break the bank for you. So check it out there on all platforms, like I mentioned. That was Trek to Yomi. All right, now we're headed to what's on stream. It's some fun stuff on TV these days. I hope y'all not doing it. I hope y'all do. I hope y'all doing it. Cause when you have time to burn and you want to relax, it's on a good show. And here you go. Row, row, row your boat gently what's on the stream. Uh, sorry, up? excuse me. It's time for what's on stream. All right, what's on stream? I got a fun one. You know. It's, it's season two of this show. So if you haven't watched season one of it, you might be a little lost. But I didn't get the video up because I've been super busy. Let me get it up here. But this is a show that you will like. It has uh, Kelly Quarko or Kuko from um, Big Bang Theory. I check her out. And she it plays a fight attendant from season one. Oh, stop the video. Set up. From season one, she plays a flight attendant that has a little, she goes too hard in the paint. Ladies you know? and gentlemen, and season one, if you haven't watched it, 
she witnessed, or she was a part of a murder. She didn't commit the crime, but she was just a, a person there. She was an innocent victim. But now, the season two, is this season one or two? Oh, darn it. Well, this is season one. I'll show you season two after this. And uh, so this is, you'll see what happens and how her wife become, her life starts to spin out of control from this moment here. He was so alive. Yes, Callie. So she imagines, you know, she's in her own head. She's visualizing the person, the guy who got murdered and people coming after her, but some of it's real and some of it is in her head. So you gotta really watch and pay attention. If you get up and come back, you might be lost because she might be doing a scene from her head. They have this, these brain scenes or these flashback scenes of her. Um, dealing with what just happened. So season two is up. I'm gonna do that video next. This is season one. I'm glad I put that. This did this by mistake. So you know, it happened. Um, but like you see, he's she's, so she's very paranoid. You know, flight attendant. She's a, as you see, she goes hard in the paint. She does a lot of vodka there. Um, so she's trying to find out how and why the guy she hooked up with got murdered. How do you think you're getting away with any of this? So it seems like that, that will kind of might freak you out here. But it's pretty cool. And it's always good. It's a whodunit. Who doesn't love a whodunit? I know I do. It's interesting always to see who done it and who did it and who didn't do it. And now here's the video for season two of the flight attendant. If you thought season one was wild, season two is going to be one trip you will never forget. Yes, she did. Check out the trailer for the new season of The Flight Attendant coming soon to HBO Max. There you go, Callie. Callie Cuco, if I'm saying her name correct. My life and everything, it just all feels pretty great. All right. Since I quit drinking, I've been making changes. You have So she's now like in rehab. Here. She is taking Alcoholics Anonymous. She got a new boyfriend there. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, beauty. You seem very put together. Do I? Her co-worker. She has new co-workers. But same scene. She's traveling a lot because she's a flight attendant, obviously. But now, she's kind of doing a little too much. I'm an asset for the CIA. Boom. There it is. So now from the murder <laughs> from season no one, secrets, so the CIA investigated, investigated her, was, was like seeing her at different scenes, and now it's like, wait a minute, do you want to work for us? But you got to be in the background, but she doesn't know how to do that. So she is now following targets, but sometimes getting a little too close. And right now it's only four episodes up, so you can get on it and be done by, if you do it today, you'll be done by night, you know, by later tonight. So check it out. It's on HBO Max if you have it, if you, or if you have the, the bundle, whatever, it's out there. But this is her flash in and out of her own brain. She's conversating with herself. So like I said, if you get up, go to the bathroom, come back, don't get lost. She's probably just having her own flashback. She has different flashbacks of herself. That's good. Um, Callie, and then she has the party one that's in the other sequence dress. Um, and then that's her friend, that's a lawyer that's trying to always help her by making her make the right decisions. And she does it. Of course, it wouldn't be a show if the character always made the right decisions. Yeah, uh, Rosie uh, Lopez there, the great actress from back in the day, do the right thing. Love her. Um, and then you just have a, uh, a great cast of people in this. Oh, Sharon Stone. I haven't seen that yet, so that must be on the further episodes. So Callie Cuco from Big Bang Theory is doing a fantastic job coming from the comedy world, bringing it into the more drama suspense who done it world. She does a great job of playing a role. This season, obviously being away from the alcohol, trying to run her life without it, is still chaotic though. So it's happening. So check it out, it's on HBO Max. And uh, let's look in the chat. I see a lot of people putting stuff in the chat about what they're watching. We got man, Hulk versus Sponsor, Moonlight Finale. When I get home, yes, Moonlight Finale is tonight, I believe. Can't wait to that. That is a great series. It was only six six episodes. Dang, they really drew, they threw that hook out there and they reeled this in real fast. I'm like, man, like that's no fun. Six episodes of that great series. But you, I watched a little bit of uh, 
you know, saw some information on Moon Knight. So Moon Knight obviously is a part of the whole MCU, but also is a part of Affinity War and all that storyline. If you go back to uh, to Winter Soldier when he was introduced to the fray, and when Captain America finding out that Hydra was a part of the the army or the one group that was helping the Avengers fight Hydra and the baddies. The one um, officer that mentioned, you know, we, there was a, you know, they're talking about all the assets and making sure they they scour the earth and make sure they know where all the mutants are at or all the, the extra special people with powers like Captain America and like the Hulk, like uh, Black Widow, uh, that they always keep an eye on them. And he, he did mention that there was a reporter in Cairo at the time. So this is Winter Soldier. So if you go back, that had to have been like 2000. 13, 14, somewhere in there when Winter Soldier came out and that line was mentioned. So it just shows you the big picture that Marvel had at that time is so awesome because to connect those dots all the way back to Winter Soldier to now, to now see Moon Knight and what he's doing. And this is only a short season of six episodes, so I'm excited. And yes, Big B, we have Doctor Strange coming out this weekend. So I'm excited for that, Big B. Um, but so Marvel... Star Wars, Disney, done it beautifully. Just golf clap to them. I, I, I appreciate it. Me being a big geek fan, I love it. And uh, it's been it's been spectacular. Just enjoying all of it. Everything that Marvel is doing, everything that DC is doing. You're going to Disney Plus, you're just going to, if you got kids, they're happy. You got you and you're a big comic book fan. Or if you're not, it's other stuff on there like Jeff Goldblum. You're excited. So go to Disney Plus, check it out. But Flight Attendant is on HBO Max, by the way. But uh, you know what? We're at the end of the show, man. I want to say thank you, everybody in the house. The usual suspects, House versus, versus Fine, JFK, Big B, Notorious Afro, um, John. I hope everything's well with you and your mom and you got her taken care of and she's doing well in her recovery. Um, can't, can't wait to have you back next week. So next week on the show, we got backup quarterback, Kurt Ben Kirk, who is also a Twitch streamer. As myself and as some of you that are in the chat, we will be on this show next Tuesday. It's going to be to fit his schedule because he's a current player. He has mini camps right now. So the, his best time will be on a Tuesday afternoon evening. I believe we, we he said six o'clock. So we're streaming at six o'clock interviewing. And this is going to be a, like a fun episode because I'll be able to interview him, stream, interview and then stream. I might stream some Halo after the interview um, and after the podcast. So we're shooting on Tuesday, May 10th at, I believe, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time with Kurt Binker, who is also a streamer. So if you haven't followed him or haven't watched him on his stream, do it now. I know I'm going to do it. He's come into our, my chat a few times um, last year. So big ups to him. So I can't wait to get him on the, on the stream here to ask him questions about what he's doing, why he's doing it, because I know he's doing a lot of big things in this content creator space already um because he's that new generation of athlete that understands twitch and understands social media and how to use it and i know he's doing he's already doing big initiatives to help people um, get into the gaming world if it's from education wise if it's from learning how to game a certain way or learning how to uh be a marketer for yourself or be a business person in the content creation space he is doing it already so i can't wait to have him on the show so again like i mentioned at the top of the show Download this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you watch it here on Twitch Live, great. Thank you. Follow me. We like us, review us. We need the feedback to get better. Um, and what else do I got? What else is, is the rundown? Um, I'm on, we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Right now we're streaming on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We're streaming four different places right now, just so y'all know. We're, we're streaming everywhere. I don't even know half of the stuff is if it's even legal. Um, and there's my social media right there. <laughs> I've been told by Notorious Afro several times that some of the stuff we do might be a little bit illegal. But is yes, you're welcome, Park versus Spawn. Jackie Chili's, thank you for coming in, man. And go Big Red. I think you're a Husker fan too. Um, Jay Big Packer fan, what's up? Hope you like the draft. I did like the Packer draft. I know somebody put that in there. I did like what the Packers did in the draft. They got three receivers. They got three old linemen and then a couple of, you know, linebackers slash safeties with Quay um, and uh, um, was a kid. Oh, 
Tyreek Carpenter, and then my alumni, uh, Tor, uh, Samori Tori, the wide receiver out in Nebraska. He was the last pick. So, like I said in my football podcast, Tori, uh, oh, Samori Tori, special teams, baby. You got to eat there first to get on that field, unless you bust it out in practice and mini camps, learn to play. So, good luck to all those rookies coming in to um, into the Packers organization. Dobbs as well. J. Bick or Big B mentioned there. Um, and I would say thank you for coming in again. And I will see everyone next week coming off the same. Now I got to do all the stuff to click off. So give me a second here. And bye. Right.